Hey guys, how's it going? So, Smallgate just announced a lot of uh, pretty crazy changes that they'll be making to the game. Um, and one of the big ones is about the summons. So, one of the big things is that we're getting a custom group summon where you get to choose three characters, uh, RGB characters, red, green, blue, that you want to have on this banner. And it's your own banner you get to decide on. It has a nice coin system with pity. I'll explain that how that works in a second. And the second is we also get a custom Mystic Zone where you choose two characters that you want to have on it, and it seems to have that same coin system, which is kind of a big deal. So basically how this will work is the characters have to be released at least six months before the end date of this. So you can wait a little bit to go for certain characters that were out not too long ago, possibly. And for limited characters, they had to have had at least one rerun, so you can't get them right after. So you can't get a character like Summertime Asaria, for instance, and they can't be a collaboration character. So the ones that you can choose are Luna, Dien, Landy, Seaside Bologna, Holiday Fiend, Cerise, and Fairytale Tenebrio. So um, they also come with the artifacts, which is pretty nice as well, and you can choose up to three. So how the coin system works is every time you do a pull, you get a coin. and when you reach 120 coins, you could use this to go into the Mirage coin shop and pull the exact character you want. But if on the way to those 120 pulls, you pulled any of these three five stars, it does not reset the amount of coins you have. So this makes it so that you can pull for, let's say, Luna on this banner that the person has. And if you get Destina and Vivian on the way to Luna, you could then use those coins to pity her. So it's basically a better pity system, uh, where if you pull a character, you're not resetting the pity. So it makes it a lot more generous for newer players. Um, I guess if you're an older player, it's not really that useful. You can also use 100 coins to pull for the artifact that of your choosing. So let's say you get the characters you want, you could use the extra coins to pull for Draco Plate, Luna's artifact, for instance. So. It's a very generous banner, pretty much, where you get to just pick and choose exactly what you want to get and not really waste any extra bookmarks, really. And so this Mystic Summon banner also seems to kind of work that way with the Mystic Coins, which might mean that you could choose, let's say, Maid Chloe here. And let's say you get Maid Chloe after 100 summons. Well, you would have 100 Mirage Coins, and so if you did 100 more summons and didn't get, let's say, Last Rider Crow right here, then you would be able to use those coins to pity Last Rider Crow. So that means it's basically just a more generous Mystic Banner as well. Um, and you can also choose the four stars if you're choosing as well. So this seems very powerful. <laughs> like, this seems like a really big deal. So a lot of people are wondering, well, what should I be choosing? What's the most efficient? So I'm going to be going through and pretty much talking about uh, what characters I would say are the best for people. And you might have some of them already. So maybe I'll talk about some backup plans as well for uh, both of these types of banners. So, first of all, let's take a look at all the RGB characters here, and uh, maybe what you would want to choose. So, the first one I would say, Hua Young, she just had her banner. Uh, she's absolutely broken, but you can't choose her, because she came out too recently. So, she's not actually going to be a possible choice. So, we'll have to skip that. Um, some characters here are decent, you know, such as Lily. She's an okay character, but she's kind of fallen off in recent times. You don't see her that much, you know. You can't choose Summertime Asaria, unfortunately. Kawarik has actually become quite strong in recent times. Uh, there was a tournament currently going on. I'm going to butcher the name. I think it's called like the Zhengkai Cup or something along those lines. Zhang, Zhengkai Cup? Whatever. Um, and Kawarik is actually pretty insane in there. He's been popping off. You see him a lot in high up RTA nowadays. He's very strong. He has pretty high gear requirements, but he's very powerful. He's an endgame option, possibly. Um, Politis, I would say, is a pretty good option as well. She's uh, very strong in general. Uh, just She's pretty much irreplaceable. She does something other characters don't do. She can punish a lot of characters. She's pretty good versus characters such as Emma Lilius because she's able to punish Emma Lilius using the abilities. Uh, a lot of them run them high effectiveness or effect resist on crown to stun teams that do that, so you can really hard punish them. She's a very good character overall. I'd say she's maybe one of the best RGP characters in the game overall for players, and I might recommend her as an option. Tamarin, I would say, if you're a newer player, is absolutely one of the best characters to go for. This character completely carries PvE. She's completely insane at it, actually. Um, she makes 
all challenge pve stuff generally trivial so like raid content things she makes abyss much easier those are some of the hardest things that are out and i would definitely recommend her if you're a newer player rather than having to wait for one of her banners possibly but as we continue on maybe you don't want her as much as some of these other characters but she is the queen of pve when it comes to support while specter tenebria is the queen of pve when it comes to dps so she's an insane choice and i recommend for all newer players especially so next we come up to a character like luna so luna's a limited so a lot of people will be tempted and also a lot of people like the character i don't really recommend getting her unless you're trying to go for draco plate she's not all that strong her artifact is a pretty good artifact overall i do recommend that artifact if you have nothing else to choose but luna herself is not very strong she's not especially amazing at pvp or pv she's okay at pv but just not really anything special so crow has kind of fallen off he's a, a unit of note but in recent times he's fallen off a bit not really as good i might not recommend him Kisei is also very similar to Kawarik, where become kind of popular early turn damage dealer that resets people. Pretty strong character overall. Also hard to build, maybe even harder to build than Kawarik, really. Um, I'm not sure if I'd exactly recommend her, but she's an okay character if you don't have too many things to choose. Unfortunately, people are not going to be able to choose Peira. She's too recent. She's by far one of the best RGBs in the game. Notice that her and Huang are pretty recent and also completely insane. But she's unchoosable, otherwise I probably would recommend her. Now, as for Ran, since we have multiple months to choose these banners, I believe it's possible Ran could be chosen? If you're trying to cleave, Ran is obviously by far one of the best characters in the game. And even if you're not cleaving all the time, he's a pretty decent character. Even DPS Ran can kind of work. But if you're going for early turn aggro, he's definitely one of the kings, especially in Cleave. And he's a pretty solid choice overall. But if you're a newer player, I might not go for him. So Cerise was another one of the options. Her artifact is Guiding Light, which is an amazing artifact for rangers. Cerise herself is very good at some PvE stuff, such as um, Expedition, she's very, very good at. Um, I don't know if I would choose her over some of these others exactly, but if you already have some of the others and you're not too interested, she's a very good PvE character. In PvP, she's kind of fallen off a bit, but in PvP, she's definitely very strong, especially with Expos. Flan is not as popular now as she was. She's a decent character, but I'm not really sure I would choose her on something like this, um, unless you're, you've already gotten almost all the other characters. Seaside Bologna. This is something I recommend everybody get if they don't have her. She's just a really solid character to have, useful in PvP and PvE. You don't see her as much in PvP right now, but I wouldn't say that she's a bad character. Uh, she might even combo with uh, Jacko coming out, who knows. And uh, I think that she's just a really strong character for newer players to have. People of all skill level, uh, she's just useful to have. She has been around for a long time and she's never truly fallen off she always comes back and she's always a useful character so i would really recommend her for newer players i think seaside balloon is very good um ida is a decent character but that's more for end game players she's decent for really high aggro cleave either one of those um you can do either one and she's a solid one, but I don't know if I'd really recommend her for most people. Fairytale Tenebria, she's actually kind of fallen off. It's interesting. I think it's because some of the characters in the game right now are just so powerful. I wouldn't say she's like a terrible unit, but it's just she's not really worthwhile running compared to some of these other characters that are crazy nowadays, like Angel of Light, Peyra, Emma Lilius, you know? So I don't know if I'd really recommend Fairytale Tenebria, honestly. Um, she's okay, but you could always just wait for her banner to come around in December again if you're interested. Dien also, Dien has really fallen off. It's disappointing because uh, she was always a pretty staple character. She hasn't had a banner in a long time either, but I wouldn't really say that she's all that useful for most people. She's decent in PvE. In PvP though, she just has a really, really hard time nowadays. She doesn't do enough. She doesn't cleanse enough. I don't know if I'd really recommend her unless you just really want Dien. Her artifact isn't really all that amazing either. Ah, as an aside, uh, Fairytale Tenebria's artifact is very good on Solitaria and Arctic Mercedes if you really need those. Um, 
but it's not a must to have for the most part. You can't choose Amelia, she's a collab character. Um, can't choose Reamer either due to that. Uh, Senya's okay, but not really all that good anymore. I like Selene, but I think that I'm a little bit biased. I use her a decent amount in RTA to a good amount of success, success but she requires pretty damn good gear to really get working. And I don't know if I'd really recommend her for most people, although I like the character, and she does need her own artifact. Violet has fallen off a bit as well. I'm not sure if I'd recommend him. Um, he's nice to have built. He's not bad, but he's hard to use a lot of the time, and he's not quite the king that he used to be. There's a lot of ways to deal with him now. He's not invincible. There's a lot of strong counters, and he's just not one of those must-have units as he was before. But he's an okay character to have. Newer players could consider getting a Saria. She works insanely well with Tamarin. Um, she's just a good PvE character in general, if that's what you're looking for. But she's not really a PvP character at all, so I might not recommend her to a lot of people. Now as for Landy, I would recommend this character for people. Um, I think she's kind of like SSB, where she's just a good character in PvE and PvP. She's just very strong overall. Um, she always comes back, even when people stop using the Bruiser version, people started using the fast Landy with damage version to push their team. And she started to become popular that way. I think she's just a useful character for newer players to have, and older players. And I'd probably recommend this character be one of the characters that people go for, really. I think that Tamarin, Landy, and Seaside Bologna might be the three main characters that if you have none of them you might want to go for. You could consider some of the other choices I've said so far as well. Um, if we go for the rest of these characters though, I would say the only other RGB would maybe be Rowana. Rowana is a pretty good character in PvE. Uh, she's kind of a niche unit, which is weird, but she's useful in a lot of situations in challenge PvE content, such as, I don't know, Expeditions for instance. And in PvP, she's actually pretty good to counter some units such as, you know, like Solitaria or Belion, for instance. And she shows up every once in a while. I actually fight against her a lot due to the units that I pick. She can be a nice character to have. Um, not an insane must-pull, but she's useful, I would say. So, that's pretty much all the RGBs. Um, I said it before, but I would say the main ones are Landy, Seaside, Bologna, Tamarin for a newer player. All very strong. They are useful in a bunch of different content. Tamarin is just the goddess of all PvE, pretty much. She's not used in every single hunt, but everything outside of that, she's pretty much used it. Um, as for Landy and SSB, they're multi-purpose in PvE and PvP. They're both pretty useful, and they're both just really strong units for trying to get into PvP as well. So if you're kind of trying to get into that early on. I recommend some other characters that are backups. Uh, they're also strong, such as Politis. Politis is a very good character. If you're really endgame and you want to have fun, Kawarik can be a pretty good unit right now. He's very strong at the moment. Um, some of these characters like Ran, if we can choose him, we'll have to see. Because his banner was semi-recent, but maybe if you wait closer to the end of the choosing of the banner, you might be able to choose him. It may have been six months, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, I would say those are some of the main choices that I would go for, that I recommend. Now, let's talk about the ML5s. So... There's a lot of good ML5s, and everybody wants ML5s, so you kind of want to choose the ones that are really good. Uh, most people who have listened to a lot of different people's advice probably have Spectre Tenebria as their starting ML5 from the Moonlight uh, Selector banner thing, right? But there's a lot of characters that you might want. And so I'm going to kind of talk about all the ones that I would say are more viable right now or have a potential. So, first of all, Conqueror Lilius. I don't think that you can choose her. Her banner has actually been too soon. So unless unless they ease up on the constraints of it, or maybe you wait till the end of the period where you can choose, you might be able to choose Conqueror Lilius. If I look at this carefully, um, it says, uh, let's see. Mm. Moonlight heroes whose banners ended at least six months ago will be available to choose to summon. The summoning event will take place starting April 28th and ending July 21st. So I'm not sure if you could wait past April 28th, closer to July 21st, and then choose someone like Emma Lilius. I'm not sure if they'll actually allow you to do that. If they do, 
She's by far one of the best characters in the game. This character is picked in almost every single match. She gets pre-banned all the time, she gets post-banned all the time. By far one of the best characters. Uh, if you can choose her, she's definitely one of the best choices. Um, very fun, good at all skill levels, I would say. Um, she's even pretty decent at PvE, really. By far one of the best characters. I would 100% choose this as one of the main ones if you can. If you can, but we'll have to see. Um, then the next one I would say of note is maybe Lionheart Sarmio. But the problem is, you can't go for her either. She's too recent of a unit, so most likely this unit is going to be unobtainable from it as well. She's alright. She's not an insane unit, but she's a very good niche unit. Yeah, she actually sees a decent amount of play. Little Queen Charlotte. I don't think that she's been recent. Um, I think she's a pretty decent character. The one downside is I would say she requires a lot of support of the team of usually stronger characters, especially ML5, such as let's say ML Quaric. So while she's a decent character, she's not exactly like the tip-top choice compared to some of these others. Ambitious Tywin has kind of fallen off, but the thing is, Ambitious Tywin comes and goes with the meta. Sometimes he's crap, and he's not good at all, and sometimes the meta changes, and suddenly he becomes one of the most picked units. It's really just, uh, you have to see where the wind takes you on him, and I don't know if I would go for him, though, because he might not be as strong as a lot of these other ones going forward. Belion is a pretty decent choice. Belion is... she's considered a mistake, pretty much. She's very powerful, right? And I think she's probably one of the high-up choices. She gets pre-banned non-stop because of how threatening she is to cleave teams and also just how frustrating she can be. She's one of the premier counters to a character like Spectre Tenebria. She's one of the best counters to cleave teams often because they like to use souls and also her counterattacks can be deadly. She can be kind of hit or miss in games and she has some RNG but she's a very powerful unit, and she can't really be power crept or anything like that as well. I think it's important to try and look at characters and how easy they can be replaced, and I don't really see this character being replaced anytime soon. Very strong. Uh, I would put her as a pretty high up choice as well. She's a very good bruiser unit. In general, can be built on counter or injury mostly, and yeah, I might recommend her as one of the choices. Uh, the next one I would maybe say... Hmm, I wouldn't really recommend these characters. Spirit Eye Selene is an okay character, but she's really awkward to use. Sage Bale is an okay character as well. The next I would probably say is Solitaria. So, Solitaria is just overall pretty nice now, I would say. I use her actually non-stop in my games. Uh, I draft her probably either every game or every other game, just about. Uh, I'm currently at like, hey, rank 4 legend in preseason. I know it's preseason, but hey, I gotta be doing something right, you know? I think Solitaria is a very strong disruptor. We started seeing Dizzy kind of close to the end of last RTA season. She was being picked because a lot of teams wouldn't have a debuffer, and if they don't have a debuffer and you pick somebody like Solitaria or Dizzy, let's say, then she, they can single-handedly disable the opponent's team and cripple them which is really powerful. When Solitaria goes unchecked, she can actually carry the entire match. The amount of debuffs she's putting on with uh, Daydream is kind of insane. She's very powerful with it. The stun is huge. And the fact that she disables focus is good versus characters like Arctic Mercedes, Remnant Violet, Regular Violet, SSB. So she hard uh, disables those characters automatically. And then even when my opponent doesn't have them, I think she's an incredibly good disabler. Now the difficult part is she's not the easiest to build. Um, she requires pretty good gear. You want a decent amount of speed, you want some tankiness, and I think the effect resist build is really good, so she's not the easiest to build, but she's very strong. I might recommend her as one of the choices, maybe not the highest though, because there's some insanely powerful characters that definitely take precedence. Ruel of Light is a pretty decent choice. Uh, if you didn't get her from, I'm assuming, your Moonlight Selector. She's a decent character, not one of the highest choices, overall strong for uh, tanky teams. Usually, no matter what happens, she comes back at some point. Like, sometimes she has a bad meta, everybody says buff her well, but then she comes back. And, you know, she's just a solid unit when it really comes down to it. Uh, Apocalypse Ravi, definitely one of the top choices. Like, what can I say? She's picked 
first pick nonstop. She's on almost every single team because she's such a safe unit. She's a safe and secure unit where you never get punished really for picking her. She's always pretty helpful to a team. She doesn't die easily. She's good versus cleave teams. She's good versus bruiser teams. She's good versus aggro teams. She's just kind of always useful in almost every scenario really. And she's definitely one of the top choices. I would put her kind of up there with Conqueror Lilius as a couple of the very top units to go for. Um, very strong, just in every possible way. Even in PvE, she's a pretty good tank damage dealer because she just never really dies. That's the thing, is she's just so hard to kill. And I would definitely put her high up there. Next one I would say is probably designed with Lilibet. So this character, after her buff, like Solitaria, has become pretty strong. What's powerful about her as a cleanser is she's a cleanser who's aggressive. You can use her versus aggro teams or in aggro teams where she's able to actually um, cleanse debuffs, obviously, and retaliate with some damage. And she's actually an okay damage dealer. And sometimes you can actually do things where you let your, your team get debuffed and you just sit there debuffed, not really caring too much, while you constantly cycle with emergency stitching. So you're just constantly taking more turns. She's one of the two best cleansers, I would say, in the game, the other being Emil Kowarik, who we'll talk about next. And while she, she's best versus cleave and really aggressive teams is where she truly shines. In a slow match, she's not always the best, but she's very good when you're trying to end a match kind of quickly, I would say, because she doesn't have a ton of staying power. Mediator Quaric. I would, I personally consider this guy the best character in the game. Um, I think him and Emma Lilius are definitely two of the best ones as Apocalypse Ravi, as is her. This character, um, a lot of people, especially newer players, don't really understand the power of him, but he brings so much to the table, it's actually kind of incredible. He invalidates half of your opponent's roster from really working. No debuffs work. You can't stop him from taking a turn. His S2 being able to disable a unit is a huge deal. You get to strip buffs, um, and attack down can be huge versus, for instance, a character like Little Queen Charlotte doesn't counter him because he stops Little Queen Charlotte from being able to do damage. He doesn't have to build effect resist, and you'll notice that him and Desire Lilibet, the two best cleansers, don't have to build effect resist because effect resist is a pretty crummy stat. And basically you're taking like 250 to 300% effect resist. You're taking those stats and instead you're putting them into tankiness on a character like this. So he's run, he's like 250 speed, 24,000 health, insane defense, so tanky you can't get rid of him. And he's just always there buffing his team and debuffing yours. Um, he's constantly pushing the team. By far one of the most powerful units in the game. No cleanser even comes close to him really. Uh, he's weak against cleave, but in standard, he is a god overall. He is a king. Um, he's just an incredibly powerful character in standard play. I would put him high up there with Emo Lilius and Apocalypse Ravi for sure. Strays is not used as much. However, something to note is he is the best hunt one-shotter in the entire game. So that's something to maybe consider if you're just trying to one-shot hunts and you don't really care about all these other MO5s. He has a high gear requirement for some of them, but he just blows up the hunts uh, if you have some really good rage gear. Fallen Cecilia, I would say, is one of the highest up ones too. Uh, similar to Emo Lilius, Emo Quaric, um, you know, uh, Apocalypse Ravi. She's probably the ultimate tank in the game. Since her release, uh, there's never been a tank that's really trumped her. She's always been good. She's very solid, uh, very consistent. She's a very simple character, but she just does exactly what you want all the time. You're never really disappointed in her. You know exactly what to expect. She can be built in, you know, a, a couple of tricky ways, like if you want to go high effectiveness to provoke people or something like that. But she's one of the only knights right now that is picked as mitigation. And I think that says something, that she's one of the only ones that actually has enough value and enough protection for your team that she's actually worthwhile picking um, because a lot of other knights aren't that viable right now she's just an incredibly powerful unit um, she's irreplaceable really uh, a lot of these other mo5s that i'm talking about i would say are irreplaceable but she's definitely the ultimate knight tank if that's what you're really looking for and i would put her up there with uh, characters like emil Kowarik as just being the uh, top of their craft let's say 
I'd put her as the top tank. I'd put Apocalypse Ravi as the top bruiser. Mediator Kowarik, I would say, is the uh, top support. And Emma Lilius is maybe also one of the top supports. Next, um, Closer Charles, you don't see as much anymore. He was a big deal. He's a nice aggro unit, but I think he just doesn't do enough compared to some of these ridiculous aggro units like Peyra and Emma Lilius, so you don't see him as much. Remnant Violet is like a cockroach, but in a good way. People would always ask for buffs for him, and yet he would still always be getting played in RTA. No matter how many characters that came out that would uh, counter him, you would still see him. He would keep coming back. He never stops. But there might be enough counters out right now that he actually has some trouble. I still use him every once in a while, and I see other people use him every once in a while. That doesn't mean that he's amazing or terrible, but I think that he's a decent unit but he might not be one of the high priority units that you would go for. Briar with Jessaria, you don't really see as much anymore, so I might not go for her, even though she's a decent debuffer unit. I think some of the units have gone a little out of control, so she's kind of fallen off, and she's also bad against a lot of the popular openers. Operator Sigrid, um, she's an amazing counter to characters like FCC and stuff like that. She's really nice to have. If she has attack buff, she can one-shot a character like Hua Young, which is nice, but without it, she might have some difficulty. Uh, Operator Sigrid's decent, but I don't know if I'd really recommend her. She also has a very high gear requirement. Arc Demon Shadow is definitely a very high up character ever since her buff. She, I would say she's my most hated unit in the entire game. She's definitely powerful, but she's a boomer bust character where sometimes she pops off and goes insane. And sometimes she does almost nothing, really. Um, she requires a good counter set to really work. I think that there's more characters now that counter her, such as Hua Young and Solitaria are very strong versus her, so I've been seeing her a lot less, even though she was so prevalent before uh, the buffs and Hua Young came out. She's a decent unit, maybe not one of the top top choices, but she's a very strong bruiser overall and she can carry a match entirely by herself. Spectre Tenebria, um, I'm just going to assume that most people have her, she's one of the best DPS units in the game. Uh, She's the best PvE DPS in the entire game as well. Just an overall very strong unit. Uh, I don't know if I would choose her over some of these characters like Emma Lilies and stuff if you're on the fence. But she's definitely a very good character to have. I recommend everybody choose her from your Moonlight Selector at the start of the game, really. And then that's kind of all the ML5s right there. So if we were to choose the best ML5s to go for, um, in no particular order, I would say Mediator Quaric, Apocalypse Ravi, Fallen Cecilia, Emma Lilius are probably the top choices. You get to choose two of these characters that you could go for. I don't know if you're going to be able to go for Emma Lilius though, so let's assume that you can't. And say Mediator Quaric, Apocalypse Ravi, Fallen Cecilia. Some of these other choices, uh, such as let's say Designer Lilibet or Solitaria, or Belion um, are very good characters. They're very good. Like, I don't want to undervalue some of these or say, like, oh, well, why didn't you suggest this one? But I think that Apocalypse Ravi, Emil Quirk, Emil Lilius, and Fallen Cecilia are definitely, like, the best. They're. I don't see them really falling out of favor. They're just always powerful. Um, they have insanely strong skill sets. If they were to be power crept, I would. Uh, think that the game is just going to die because they're so ridiculously powerful already. And I think those are probably the top choices. Um, one last thing I guess I'll say is Maid Chloe is okay. She's actually the next RTA skin, by the way. Uh, you could probably look it up. But I think she's very inferior to Mediator Quaric to the point where he is just a gargantuan compared to her. She is so much weaker than him. So of these characters, uh, those are the ML5s I would probably go for. The last thing I guess you can choose is what ML4s um, on the banner, because you can choose that as well. I'll just go over that very quickly. Crimson Armin isn't used as much, but she's definitely one of the best ML4s, just a very strong tank. Uh, just overall good character I may recommend. Watcher Shuri is about to get an EE, I don't know if that's going to make him suddenly a big deal, but he's always been a decent cleave character. Angel of Light is the best ML4 in the game, I don't think anyone would disagree with me there. She's ridiculous. Uh, definitely one of the strongest characters in the game as well. So I would probably recommend her as one of your characters for sure, really. She's incredibly powerful. 
Uh, T. Crosset is a decent knight. He's become one of the more popular knights because he gives so much mitigation to his team. Um, well, just the person in the back line for people who are trying to do solo DPS kind of carries with characters such as ML Sermia, let's say. Um, so he's a decent choice. Assassin Sid is a good speed contest unit. You don't see him as much anymore, but... He's an alright character to have as a speed contest because he's one of the fastest characters in the game. So you can, if you have some decent speed gear, pop it on him and you might be able to contest some of these people trying to take first turn. Um, BBK is an alright unit. She's not really super crazy, but she's definitely... She's nice. She's alright. I see some people run her every once in a while, but I think she has difficulty now with the amount of powerful openers that you see that strip buffs. So she's kind of fallen off a bit due to that. Then I would say Cesarado, is, he might actually become a little more popular with the amount of uh, debuffs that we're seeing nowadays, uh, but he's not really amazing, I guess I would say, nowadays. Uh, he's a selfish unit where he'll be the last one standing, returning debuffs, and he's alright, but nothing too crazy. Sinful Angelica is okay. Not really too crazy either, but she helps you one-shot Wyvern if you need something like that. I'd also maybe say an honorable mention, Kitty Clarissa helps a lot in some Abyss floors, which is nice. Um, Inferno Kawazu can be a decent counter pick to aggro or cleave teams, which is nice. And I think that would maybe be all of the four stars. Uh, there's not a lot of amazing four stars. General Purgus you could use for Wyvern, but he's not really that amazing anymore since the Mui three-star unit is very good. So I think that that would be probably all the four-star choices. So I think that pretty much covers all of those. Um, I'd really recommend uh, going for some of the units that I suggested. It's not like you have to, but I think that they're usually the strongest units either in the past up until now, or they're just very strong units right now. Most of them seem to have a lot of staying power and I don't see them leaving soon. So. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about power creep on a lot of these units that I named because a lot of them are just either the, they have specific abilities that enable them to be so useful in many situations or they're just so powerful that, I mean, even if they got power crept, you would still probably use them because they're so good. And so I think that pretty much covers it. So I hope that this video helped some of you guys uh, choose maybe what characters that you're looking for out of all of the RGBs. And this is, you know, I had a little bit of reasoning as to why you could choose them. And I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks a bunch for watching.